So let's study a complex example, namely finding the electric field some distance z from the center of a spherical surface, which has radius r, and carries a charge q uniformly distributed over its surface. From the setup of the problem, we want to find the electric field some distance z above the center of a uniformly charged sphere. Just so we can talk about the charge on the surface, so there is a surface charge density, which is uniform and equal to the charge divided by the surface area of the sphere. Now in order to find the electric field at the point Z, what we really need to do is to find the electric field due to some small piece of charge and then add up the electric field due to all those little pieces of charge. So a small piece of charge will have some charge dq, which will be sigma times the small amount of area. And the small amount of area in this case will be a little bit of a displacement in the theta direction and a little bit of displacement in the phi direction in spherical coordinates. Writing those out, we have sigma r squared sine theta d theta d phi for that little bit of charge dq. Now that little bit of charge dq gives a little bit of electric field, dE, pointing off in this direction. And so we can label in our vectors as usual, curly r vector, r prime, and r. And so the little bit of electric field, the magnitude of that, will be the usual electric field due to a point charge. In order to figure out the little bit of electric field produced by this little bit of charge, we need to figure out what curly r is for this little bit of charge. And so we will first need to label on our diagram the angle theta in spherical coordinates. And then we can redraw this triangle to look like this in terms of the magnitudes of the different legs. Then we can use the law of cosines to figure out the magnitude of r. And we know that the length r prime must be equal to the radius of the sphere, and so we can rewrite this for curly r the follows. So now we have an expression for the little bit of the electric field due to a little bit of charge at point z. But the problem is we don't want to take the whole magnitude of the electric field in finding the electric field at point z. In fact, all we're going to need is just the z component of the electric field. That z component of the electric field is the only piece that's going to survive by symmetry. We can figure out what that z component of the electric field is if we knew what this angle psi is. We can identify that angle psi as being the same angle psi inside of our triangle here. And so we could redraw our triangle to make this a little bit easier. Looking at our triangle and looking at our picture above, we see that we could figure out psi if we could just figure out the length of this little bit of triangle outlined in blue. And then we could use, say, a cosine. But in order to do that, we need to know this little bit of length. And if we stare at our diagram for long enough, we'll see that that little bit of length is r cosine of the angle theta in our original diagram. And so cosine of the angle psi happens to be z minus r cosine theta over the curly r. Thus the little bit of electric field in the z direction is the projection of the total electric field along to the z axis. So it's dE cosine of psi or writing that out, we have the expression This is a rather nasty expression, but we can in principle now integrate it to find the total electric field by integrating along the theta and the phi directions. Separating out the two integrals and pulling out constants, we can make this look a little bit nicer.
the phi integral can be done rather simply and will just give us a factor of 2 pi, leaving just the theta integral. We can put this in a slightly nicer form by making a u substitution by setting u as cosine theta so that du is minus sine theta d theta and then our integral This is a rather nasty integral, and we can use Mathematica to do it, or look it up in some integral table and hopefully try and find it. At any rate, we get that the integral is equal to this quantity, which we need to evaluate for u equal to negative 1 and 1. So plugging those boundary values in, we get the combinations. Now we have to be careful when we're taking the square root of these quantities, make sure we get our signs right. So as long as we're working outside of the sphere, where z is greater than r, then we can take the square root directly and the quantity in square brackets will then just give us an extra factor of 2. And plugging in for the surface charge density, we get a nice looking expression, which looks just like a point charge. It's pretty remarkable that a very messy calculation like that came out to such a nice answer.